Let's work together to inspire communities of song that sing together for the joy of doing it and to the glory of God. In this video, we look at the organist as percussionist. You might not know that we have percussion sounds on our instrument. We just have to create them. And no, they don't have to do with slamming hymnal shut or pounding on the bench. They have to do with the pipes that are at our disposal that can be used in new ways. So find a hymn for yourself that uses the forward motion of percussion to help singers to sing with joy. I've chosen one, it's from the Renaissance. That can sometimes be tricky for congregations to follow. And if you use percussion, it can not only help them, it can transport them to another time and space where people were singing just like we do today. So what you need are some really chiffy pipes in the pedal. So with the help of this Holtkamp Posse instrument at St. John's Abbey, a beautiful place, I found some pipes that will work. They're lower pipes, mostly 16 foot, some eighths, nothing with a pitch that you can hear on first attack. I really want only the chiff. And so I put them together and then I find a cluster that I can play with my feet. Again, I don't want pitch to be discernible. So I'm experimenting with different clusters that sound to me like a hand drum that they might have used in the Renaissance. So I'm just looking around for the cluster that could work. That sounds pretty cool. And just so you know, what I arrived at was low F, low G, C above that, and C sharp. But it doesn't really matter what I use. What you have to do is use your ears to figure out what cluster works for this sound that you have in your mind. So if I do, kind of sounds like a drum to me. Now, although this video isn't about organ registration, I have to mention a little bit about what I used to get that kind of Renaissance sound. So it was a crumb horn and a two foot flute. And that's what I played four part harmony with. There was a cornet for the right hand, the melody. I used a uh, ostinato in the left hand, again with that crumb horn and the two foot flute and then of course what I mentioned in the pedals. Uh, you could also use a little um, fife. Uh, you could find a very high flute that would uh, play along. All of those things are, are things to catch your congregation's ear so that they know that something's different, so that they know that we are entering a different era in this singing of this song. 
But now I have another hymn to show you that uses percussion in a different way. A very deep drum. This is a piece from the Native American tradition, indigenous people of the United States. Again, I'm looking for bass pitches, pitches in the pedal division that are without pitch at the very beginning of their attack so that you hear a lot of chiff. All right, so that is, oh, I like that too. So that is an open wood, a subas, a quintaton, and a quint bass, 10 and 2 thirds together. And I'm playing clusters. The one that I've arrived at is C, C sharp, D with my left foot, F, F sharp, G with my right foot. Again, I don't want to hear a pitch. And I'm looking for a flute, a Native American flute. Let's try this one. So that makes a lovely introduction to a hymn that recalls a point in our history that is somber. And I hope through its soundscape, it honors the people from whence it came. When the congregation starts singing, I wouldn't do much except I'd put the melody up an octave just to lead them a little better when the melody and their voices are in the same octave, sometimes it's hard to hear that melody. So I might do something like this. I've now selected some very soft strings to provide a little more of a soundscape, and this is what it would sound like. I'll begin at the end of that introduction. the organist as percussionist. Experiment, find what works on your instrument and have fun. <laughs>